Welcome to subtopic 6.2 on metal reactivity. This video is going to cover these learning objectives. Understand that metals differ in their activity or reactivity. Use a metal activity series to write redox equations for metal displacement reactions. This ties in with our first science understanding. Metals differ in their tendency to lose electrons. More reactive metals lose electrons more easily. In terms of metals, we know that they can differ in their reactivity and specifically, this is based on their tendency to lose electrons. We know that when things lose electrons, they become oxidized. So metals can be defined based on their ability to be oxidized. This is what we call the metal activity or its reactivity. The more reactive a metal, the greater its ability to oxidize. Hence, the greater its ability to act as a reducing agent. From this, we know that reactive or active metals tend to exist combined in nature and due to their ability to readily lose electrons. Some examples include sodium existing as sodium chloride, NaCl, aluminium as aluminium oxide, iron as iron oxide, zinc, zinc oxide. Less active or reactive metals tend to exist as uncombined pure elements, so they don't have a large tendency to become oxidized. From this, we can use what we call a metal activity series. This essentially lists metals in order of reactivity, so that the more reactive a metal, the higher it is in the metal activity series. This image here, you can see an example of a metal activity series going from the most active to the least active, or in other words, the most likely to become oxidized and lose electrons through to the metals that are least likely to become oxidized and lose electrons. Moving on to the second science understanding, more reactive metal is able to donate electrons to the ion of a less active metal in a displacement reaction. We need to be able to write equations and half equations for reactions between a metal and the ion of a less active metal. We will also cover differences in metal reactivity can be represented as a metal activity series and determine whether a reaction will occur between a metal and a solution containing the ions of another metal given a metal activity series containing both metals. This image here represents one of these so-called metal displacement reactions. What we've got is a copper coin that's placed into a solution of silver nitrate and what we can see is the formation of these uh, crystals and these crystals are actually silver crystals forming on the surface of the copper coin. This is a, another example, however this copper is in the form of a wire that's been coiled up and you can see when placed into a solution of silver nitrate which is essentially colourless, we start to see this transition from a colourless to a blue colour and uh, that's actually as a result of copper um, going into solution and at the same time silver metal depositing onto that copper wire and that copper coil itself. So what exactly are metal displacement reactions? It essentially involves one metal donating electrons to another metal that's in the form of an ion. And that metal ion has to be less active or less reactive than the one donating electrons. We say that the more active metal displaces ions of a less active metal and the more active metal reduces ions of a less active metal. That's because the more active metal is more likely to be oxidized and uh, more likely to lose electrons to the ions in solution. So we say that the more active metal is oxidized and we know that the substance that undergoes oxidation is classified as a reducing agent. Therefore, the uh, less active metal the ions are reduced and are classified as an oxidizing agent. We can use a metal activity series to determine whether a reaction will occur and then from that point we can then look at writing a balanced equation using half equations. For one example, I've got uh, zinc metal displacing copper from a solution of copper to sulfate. We can see that zinc's up the top here and copper's down here. So zinc being more active than copper, it would mean that zinc can displace copper ions from solution. This represents essentially the equation that we're dealing with. So zinc and copper sulfate solution goes to produce zinc sulfate solution and copper as a metal. And just take note that the copper in copper sulfate exists as copper ions. Zinc sulfate consists of zinc ions and the sulfate ions. 
what we can do is break this up into the relevant half equations, which represent the key changes that are happening. So the first one is that transition of zinc solid or zinc metal into zinc ions in solution. We can represent that as a half equation. So this is it here, zinc metal producing zinc ions in solution. To do that, it would have to become oxidized and lose two electrons. So this represents oxidation. We've got copper in solution here, so copper ions forming copper metal. In order to, to do that, copper ions would have to gain electrons, so copper 2 plus gaining two electrons and forming copper metal, this being a reduction reaction. We can see here that zinc has lost two electrons, copper ions have gained two electrons, so we can sum up these half equations and we can end up with a net ionic equation of Zn plus Cu2 plus going to produce Zn2 plus and copper metal. We can see an image of this metal displacement reaction, so placing zinc metal in a solution of copper sulfate. We can see the formation of this solid here, which is actually copper. Now, it doesn't appear as copper, but there's a good reason why. Um, and we can also see that change in that blue copper uh, sulfate solution to something that is becoming less blue, eventually potentially becoming colorless, which should be the uh, zinc ions going into solution. A second example, magnesium displaces silver from a solution of silver nitrate. Again, we can see magnesium's up here, silver is down here, magnesium is more active than silver, so this metal displacement reaction can occur. This is the balanced formula equation, so magnesium solid reacting with silver nitrate solution, it produces magnesium nitrate solution and silver metal. We can break this up into the half equations again, so the key changes is magnesium metal, magnesium as a solid, going into solution, and we know magnesium is two positive charge as an ion. So in order for that to occur, it would have to oxidize and lose two electrons. The silver, which was in solution as silver ions, Ag+, then becomes displaced and forms silver metal. And for that to occur, it would have to become reduced and gain one electron. We can see in this case that the electrons actually do not uh, equal, so we're going to need to consider multiplying that reduction half equation so that we can end up with the same number of electrons gained as lost. So effectively we would have to double this half equation for every lot of this magnesium oxidation. Our net ionic equation is therefore going to be zinc plus two lots of silver ions goes to produce zinc 2 plus and 2 silver. For the third example, we're going to determine whether a metal displacement reaction will occur between the following combinations. If so, write appropriate half equations and a net ionic equation for the reaction. But if not, explain why the reaction will not occur. The uh, first one is lead and sodium ions, second aluminium and tin 4 ions. We'll start with part A, so we've got lead and sodium ions. And if we have a look at the metal activity series, so we've got lead down the bottom here, we've got sodium ions all the way up here. What we would find is that sodium is actually more active than lead. So this metal displacement will not occur. And to explain it, we can say that lead is actually less active than sodium. So lead metal is unable to become oxidized and to give electrons to the sodium ions, given that sodium is more likely to become oxidized and it's less likely to then gain those electrons. In part B, aluminium and tin 4 ions, the metal needs to be more active than the metal ions in solution. So we have aluminium up here, we have tin down here, so this metal displacement will occur, aluminium will be able to displace tin uh, ions from solution. If we look at the half equations, then essentially aluminium will become oxidized, and in doing so it'll form aluminium ions. That's represented by this half equation here. So Al forms Al3 plus and loses three electrons, that being oxidation. In terms of the reduction, so we have tin four ions with a four positive charge, so they would need to gain four electrons to become 
tin metal. We can see both half equations have unequal numbers of electrons, so we would need to multiply each of these half equations by relevant coefficients to ensure that the number of electrons lost is equal to the number gained. Uh, the bottom line is, if, our, if we look at our net ionic equation, we should end up with four lots of aluminium reacting with three SN4+, plus to produce four Al3+, plus and three SN. That concludes the first part of 6.2 metal reactivity. I'll see you guys in the next video.